Beyond the Horizon. Can people around the world improve their standard of living and still protect the environment? Kofi Annan, as Secretary General of the United Nations, made a speech to world leaders. The topic was the health of the environment. He described two visions of the future. If environmental warning signs go unheeded, he said, the future looks grim. But if people are willing to change their ways, the future can be bright. Here is a summary of what he said. Imagine a future of constant storms and floods. Islands and coastal regions are flooded. Because of drought, nothing can grow in the hard soil. People are at war with each other over water and other natural resources. Then, imagine a future with cities and towns that are clean and pleasant. Homes, transportation, and industry are energy efficient. The standard of living for all the world's people is improving. The choice between these two different visions is ours to make. Current trends may not be very encouraging. We know enough about ecological problems to fear the worst, but there is a time to draw back from the edge of disaster. More important, another path is possible. That path is better for humanity and less harmful to the environment. The challenge of living in harmony with Earth is as old as human society itself. Things changed with the Industrial Revolution. The steam engine and the internal combustion engine were invented. People learned to take advantage of the energy locked in such fossil fuels as coal, oil, and gas. Improvements in farming methods and machinery pushed people from farms into factories and cities. The result was a revolution in living standards that the world had never seen or even imagined possible. Will rainforests like this one in New Zealand survive? This is the question people are asking themselves. Today, we need another revolution. We need to change our attitude toward the global environment. For too long, too many people have believed that we can overcome anything that limits us. And too many have believed that technology is the inevitable answer to any problem we might face. Slowly, however, we have become enlightened. We have begun to see the dangers in the prevailing way of doing things. We can see the dangers in continuing to cut down forests and use up natural water supplies. We know that an atmosphere filled with poisons puts us at risk. We realize that we cannot continue to overfish the oceans. The climate itself has begun to talk back in the form of storms and droughts. People who believe all forms of development are bad do not help either side. For the poorest members of the human family, development offers hope. It means the chance to feed, school, and care for themselves and their children. But prosperity that destroys the natural environment is no prosperity at all. We are faced with another kind of choice. We know that development is possible without using up natural resources or ruining the environment. The people of the world must come together. We must show our strong sense of common destiny. We must take this challenge seriously. In the end, we must exercise greater responsibility for one another, and we must take responsibility for the earth on which we depend. This is a picture of Jason McDougald's fourth grade class as they pose for a picture during a visit to Greybeard Wilderness. Keeping the Wilderness Wild. Robin Tynes, age 10, often goes hiking with her family in Leafy Greybeard Wilderness, a nature preserve in Montreat, North Carolina. It's really nice and quiet, she says. Robin's fourth grade class at Black Mountain Elementary School is so fond of Greybeard that they chose it as their precious place. A lot of hikers, backpackers, and mountain bikers feel that way too. The preserve's popularity has caused problems. Many visitors create their own paths, called switchbacks. Robin's teacher, Jason McDougall, explains, If there's a bend on the trail, a lot of people go straight across it to make their route shorter. They trample plants and cause erosion. 
other threats to Greybeard include campers who cut down trees for firewood and developers who build homes nearby. Development threatens the natural habitats of Greybeard's animals and can cause water and air pollution. To protect their precious place, McDougald's class has presented programs on ways to enjoy the wilderness responsibly. They organized a group to spread the message. Among their tips, stay on the trail and leave campsites just as you found them.